Hello, and thanks for joining us today at the virtual PAC Expo. Today we're going to be talking about a line analysis. It's something that our company provides for its customers. We go in and analyze a line to see if you need accumulation, and if you do, where to place it to be most effective in your production line. Mike Erling is an expert, and he's going to give you more details after we watch a short video describing the basics of a Garvey line analysis. Hello, my name is Tom Garvey and I'm going to give you a brief overview of our Garvey line analysis and how we use the theory of constraints to maximize your production. Here we have a typical wine bottling line. We did a Garvey line analysis on this line and determined that the filler was the constraint. It's capable of doing 167 bottles per minute, yet the line is only producing 130. That's because anytime one of the other machines in that line stops, it stops the filler. Bottles back up, cause the filler to stop. What we do is strategically place buffers in the line, in this case it was our infinity accumulation systems, to protect that constraint. Now when one of the other machines stops, it doesn't stop that filler. Instead, the labeler stops, the accumulation system starts to fill up, and the filler can keep running. When this labeler starts running again, it runs faster than the constraint, and it will deplete that accumulation system, allowing it to be a buffer again. By strategically placing these buffers in the line, productivity went up 28.4% from 130 bottles a minute to 167. For more information on how we do all the math and how we do all these calculations, click on the link below and you'll get a full half hour presentation on a full Garvey line analysis. Thanks for watching. Now Mike's done hundreds of these line analysis for customers and he has a lot of uh, a lot more detailed information, also a lot of common questions that we get asked during these uh, line analysis situations. So, um, Mike, do you want to go ahead? Yes. And so I'm Mike Erling. I'm vice president of sales here, and um, the reason why we do our line analysis is actually two reasons. The first reason is to try to help our customers increase throughput. The second reason is to have us understand what you go through every single day. Uh, and once we understand that, that's when we can try to help you out. So what we have here is a short presentation of what a typical line is. This is a slow line, but we will work with faster lines uh, and actually slower lines in this as well. But the whole idea behind what we're doing is to try to find the constraint on the line and never have your other machine shut that constraint down. When you have when you do not have accumulation in the line, the line is working as one group. And what happens with that one group is when one machine stops, the whole machine, the whole line goes down. So in this case, you have um, five different machines. You have a decaser. This is a, a typical wine line, but the, you have a decaser, a filler, capsular, labeler, case packer, and each one of those lines, or each one of those machines, has their own efficiency, has their own um, uh, design rate, and has its own throughput. And when the when all the machines are running together, it's only going to run as fast as what the filler can run. But in this case, the decaser can run 240 a minute, and it runs about 96 percent uptime. And we can help gather that information with you. We ask two pieces of information, mean time to, be, uh, mean time to repair a machine and mean time between failures. And that's how we come up with the efficiency of that machine, time multiplied by the, um, the, the products per minute of that, what that design rate of that, that machine is. So in this case, you have your decaser and that runs at 240. You have your filler at running at 180 at 93%. You have your case packer at 240 running at 96%. You have your labeler running at 240 at 92%. And you have your case packer running at 300 at 93%. Um, and as you can tell, we have the filler highlighted as being the constraining operation because it has the slowest throughput out of the grouping. But the line can only produce 130 bottles per minute out of the line based because you have all those efficiencies multiplied together that equals uh, a runtime of 
multiplied by the filler speed at 180, which will give you 130 bottles a minute. And at the end of the day, or at the end of that shift, that equates to about 10,400 cases per shift. So what we look at now is we try to break that grouping into smaller groups. And in this case, we identified the constraint, which is the filler, and we buffered before and after. So the first group, let's see, what do we have here? Um, so the first grouping, we, we added two infinities, and the case packer, labeler, and capsular is one group. The filler is another group, and the decaser is a group on its own as well. And with this, the line is going to produce um, at 167 bottles a minute because we broke that apart into three different groups. So the overall uh, increase in throughput is 28%. And now he's the, the, this company is averaging 13,360 cases per shift, which is a pretty big increase in throughput. And that is typical on almost all the lines that, that we work on and do a line analysis. And all we're looking at is the short little downtimes that happen at really between one to four minutes. Those, are, those downtimes happen consistently. Anything, um, any downtime that's more than five minutes, we're not looking at because it doesn't happen very often. But in this case, because we're increasing the throughput to 167 bottles per minute, that's the best the line can do because that's the filler's um, throughput. And at the end of the day, if they make 80 cents profit per bottle, the increase in throughput is 3.5 million dollars of extra profit per year. So it's it's a huge increase in uh, in productivity, and um, it, the justification is there because with a year payback, um, you can buy multiple systems. So I hope that helps. The interesting thing is that even though the, all the machines are running at above 90% efficiency, when there's no accumulation or no buffers in that line, that overall efficiency is down to 72%, which is um, it's hard to comprehend. But it is it, it does make sense that why people um, would would want to get these each machine more efficient. But when you add buffers, it's not necessary, and it's a lot of times more expensive to get one of those secondary machines other than the constraint running at a faster rate because it wouldn't impact the overall throughput of the line very much. Creating that or putting that buffer in place has an immediate effect and it's it's amazing once we can uh, show the math and, and see how efficient one buffer will make a production line. And it's the most cost effective way to do it as well. The, the payback on our machines is usually within uh, a, f a few months the machine is paid for by the increase in productivity. So if you have any questions or if you would like uh, for us to do a line analysis uh, for you or your company, please let us know. We'd be glad to do it.